All right, I'm going to show you guys how we can adjust our textures quickly, instantly, inside Blender with just a couple of simple nodes, okay? And what I'm talking about is I have this model of a tank right here, okay? I downloaded this off of Sketchfab. It's a free model, okay? It's a T10M model that I got from somebody named the Onyx. Phenomenal model, it's for free. It's a really, really high quality model, okay? Shout out to him. I downloaded this model, even though this is not the default model because I changed the texture myself for the sake of this video. But let's say for whatever reason, you're texturing something, okay? Hypothetically, you're texturing something and you're trying to combine a couple of different textures. And then you have, let's say you, need, you downloaded a leather texture, you downloaded a carbon fiber texture, you downloaded a wood texture or whatever. But they're all different colors, like one of them is a little bit brown, one of them is a little bit red, one of them is a little bit blue, whatever. But you need them all to be black, let's say. How can you do that inside Blender? How can you line them all inside Blender? Okay, I'm going to show you a very simple trick for how you can do this. Now normally, if you open these, uh, if you open your textures in an image editing program, okay, like for I'm using PaintNet right here as an example. But if you open your textures here, you can see we have a separate, we have a separate texture for our turret over here and a separate texture for the hull of the tank. All right. Now, in this case, the turret is a lot more green than the hull, okay? And normally, if you're in an image editing program, like in Paint, or if you're in Photoshop, or if you're in GIMP and whatever, you can take an image, okay? You can probably find a little menu somewhere. In this case, it's adjustments, hue, saturation. And then you can just adjust a few things, like you can reduce the saturation a little bit to make the colors a little bit less intense. You can change up the hue a little bit to make it a little bit more brown, okay? And you can make some very simple, quick adjustments to change the texture so it fits better with the other texture, okay? Now they're a little bit closer, as you can see here. Now, the trick here is that we can also do that inside Blender. So we don't have to take it inside uh, into an external program. So we don't have to take it into Photoshop every time we want to make a little adjustment to the color. Okay, it's very simple. We can do it live with just a couple of nodes. Okay, so we're just going to change the way that Blender processes these textures. All right. So if I select my turret over here, you can see that this model already has a lot of texture set up. It just has an image texture for all these different properties, right? For base color, metallic, roughness, normal map, whatever, right? And I have my turret uh, diffuse texture, image uh, color texture here, right? I can also have a little preview on the side. All I have to do now is I have to add a node with Shift A. I can add a node which is called Hue Saturation Value, okay? Which is going to do the same thing that we just had in this little menu up here, okay? Same thing. We can change the hue, the saturation, the value. We can change whatever we want just like that. But we can do it inside Blender. So now we have to plug this node in between the image texture node with the texture that we want to change and the principal node. In this case, it's plugged into base color. Okay, so we put this in the middle. By default, nothing changes because it still has the default settings. But now we can just slide, you can just use these sliders and change the values a little bit and we can make some changes just like that, right? So in this case, we're going to have to change the saturation a little bit. We're going to reduce that by a couple of points, maybe by like three points or something. And we're going to change the hue a little bit. We're going to reduce that by two points or maybe two and a half points or something. You have to manually type in the figure sometimes because it makes pretty big jumps from like 0.3 to 0.2. It's a pretty big jump sometimes, right? And this is a massive difference. So we're going to have to type it in manually in this case. And you can see now right off the bat, just from a, from a couple of uh, just from a couple of little adjustments, the textures now match perfectly, okay? And we did it live inside Blender. We can also change the value here if we want to, all right? But I'm going to leave that for now. Another node that we can use to make these type of changes is a brightness contrast node, right? So the same way that you can go to your image editing program, all right, you can select everything and go to your adjustments uh, or adjustments and brightness contrast, you can make the image darker, you can increase the contrast, okay, to increase the difference between the dark colors and the light colors, you can do the same thing inside Blender, all right? So we all we have to do now is add a node called bright contrast node, if you want to do this, right? And you plug it in the same way. You can plug it before or after this node. It doesn't really matter as long as it's between the image texture node and the principal node, all right? So now this is going to process the, the image that we have coming out of this node, or out of these two nodes. And now we can change some properties here, like we can make it darker, or we can increase the contrast a little bit, right? We can play around with some of the settings. Now, this node is particularly useful with a roughness map, okay, because we can adjust the effect of a roughness map live inside Blender. Now, how does a roughness map work? A roughness map, it, it's a black and white image, and the dark colors in a roughness map mean more shiny because a darker color is a lower value, okay, lower value in the color wheel means black. A lower value means less roughness, okay? Less roughness means a more shiny image, a more clear image, a more reflective image, right? So if we reduce the brightness of this image, okay, with this color, with this brightness contrast node over here on the turret, if we reduce the brightness, the whole image becomes, or the whole model becomes a lot more shiny, a lot more reflective, a lot more clear, let's say, right? Because it becomes a darker image. 
You can also go the other way around. You can add brightness to make it less reflective, right? Or you can also increase the contrast, which is going to increase the difference between the bright, uh, between the shiny spots and the rough spots. Okay. So if we increase the contrast by a bigger value, right now we have these, we have these uh, parts over here, which are very reflective, which are uh, quite uh, clear, or we have the other parts, which are not very reflective at all. Okay. So you can basically have a lot more control over, over all these um, uh, roughness map properties. Okay. With just a brightness contrast node. You can apply the same to your, uh, your image texture, or you can apply the same probably, you, you wouldn't probably do it with a normal map, but you can do it with whatever else you're doing, okay? Whether you're using a, a metallic map, or maybe even a height map, a displacement map, you can control this type of stuff inside Blender live, okay? And the reason this is useful is because it saves a lot of time. See, now if I want to see what this tank would look like with a different color, all I have to do now is change the hue a little bit, okay? Change the hue, or change the saturation, whatever. I can see, okay, this is what it would look like with a blue texture, all right? I don't have to take it out into PaintNet or Photoshop or GIMP every single time to make these little changes to get a preview, right? Maybe I just want to get a little quick look at what it's going to look like. So this is going to save me a couple of clicks. It's going to save me a lot of time. Now, to state the obvious, in case it's not that obvious, uh, if you do finalize your model, if you want to export it somewhere, you are going to have to have just one single image. You're not going to be able to export nodes into Unreal or into Unity or whatever else, okay? Because other programs can't understand Blender's nodes. Maybe some of them can, but probably they can't, okay? So if you want to finalize this, you're going to want to bake this again onto your image texture, onto your uh, onto your uh, texture that we have on the side. We're just going to finalize it. Because if you look at this texture over here, you can see that any changes that we made with nodes, they're not visible on the uh, on the texture on the side here. Okay. So we all, we're only changing the way that Blender is reading this texture. Okay. So now we're telling Blender, okay, we have this texture, but I want you to present it with more hue or more saturation or whatever as a darker image on the model. Okay. So only the result is changing, but the image stays the same. So if we're going to export it, we're going to have to bake this uh, separately. We're going to have to change the final image. Okay. If you guys want to make a, uh, want me to make a separate video about that, let me know in the comments. We can do some more baking uh, tutorials uh, about how to finalize images and stuff like that, or normal maps and all this different stuff, right? Otherwise, just drop, drop, uh, tell me what you think below. Drop a like, subscribe, all that stuff. All right. Join my Discord if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one.